Okay, so in this video, we're going to go through actually setting up this Lantronics device to talk to heat trace controllers. So in the knowledge base article, there's going to be some resources to talk specifically around the termination points. So that's a really high level. Um, this port here is going to be our uh, Ethernet connection. This is a serial uh, connection that we uh, uh, typically never use for anything heat tracing. We'll see a selector switch that will select between RS-485 and RS-232. So everything that we're going to be doing with heat tracing uh, primarily is always RS-485. So that selector switch is, both selector switch is um, select to the bottom. And then we have our power source uh, that's coming in here. Um, Modbus RS-485 connection ports are here. And then there is some specific jumpers. A um, little messy in our lab, but um, again, there'll be some resources in this, uh, you know, to accompany this video to, to talk specifically around the termination points. So in this video, we're going to talk about how we connect to this device, how we set the configuration up, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do some Modbus polling using a Modbus polling tool to confirm that we this is set up and we can talk to our heat trace uh, that's connected to this. So in our lab here, I've got this Lantronics device connected to um, an NVENT T2000 uh, heat trace controller. So we'll go through that. Okay, so on the main screen, the first thing we want to do is ensure that we can actually talk to our device. So there's a, another video that accompanies this that is going to talk about, hey, confirming that we can actually see and talk to this device. So the easiest thing that we do is we use command prompt to do this. So first of all, we know the IP address of this device. So we know we're gonna just confirm that we can ping it. So we're gonna use 10, dot 21.3.202 is the device IP address. We're going to hit enter and we're just going to confirm that we can see the device. Promise me this is the first thing you need to do because nothing is more frustrating than trying to program this thing and you're not able to confirm that you're actually um, communicating to the actual device. Now to program the Lantronics device is there's really two methods to do it. Both are going to be the exact same, but there's two tools, I should say. So one is using the Lantronics software. So the Lantronics software is uh, the software called Lantronics Device Installer. And what you'll do is when you, you'll boot it up is you'll do a search and it'll find all of your connected devices. And this is the one device we have. Now, there is a web configuration tool that we never use. We typically use this Telnet configuration tool. And you can use this software and you can do that. Um, but what we find to be just a lot simpler and there's no additional software required is actually just using command prompt. So what I'll do here is in the command prompt screen that I would just pinged the IP address of the device. I'm just going to type in telnet, then the IP address of the device. And what I need to do is do the port. Um, so the port for the Lantronics device to allow telnet connection is 9999. And we're going to hit enter. And now it brings me into the telnet screen. So we'll press enter for setup. And this is the screen we want to see. So really quickly, the first section um, that we see is our IP settings. So we could reconfigure and re um, and set the IP address for this device. If we were to do that, we'd simply um, select one and it'll bring us into this menu to change everything here. Um, two is the serial Modbus port settings. So here is where we're gonna actually set the protocol to Modbus RTU, um, set the uh, baud rate, the number of data bits, if there's a parity, stop bits, and if it's set up as Modbus RS-45, Modbus port. And then here what we're gonna talk about is really only items that we're going to talk about in the advanced Modbus protocol settings is around the character, message timeout, and serial transmit delay. Um, okay, so let's let's go into these individually. So if we wanted to change the IP address for anything, I'm just simply going to hit one, and that's going to let me um, re-enter my Modbus address, but in the first section here, it's going to show the 10. So if I don't want to make a change, I can just hit enter. So 10.21, not going to make a change to that not going to make a change of that, not going to make a change of that. And I can hit enter again. And it's like set an I set a uh, IP, uh, set gateway IP address. I'm just going to hit enter. It already one is already set. And it's set to 10, 21, 3. And I can make entries here to change this. Um, set Modbus at, uh, uh, set net mask. I'm going to leave it to no. It's going to 255 and then change telnet config password no and then when you make configuration changes it brings you back to this menu and if i had made any changes here what i have options i have is i can hit s for save q q for quit so for example if we had made a change here so for example i'm going to make um let's let's go back in there and let's make a change for this example so i'm going to make the ip address 10.21.3 but instead of 202 i'm going to make it 201 just for this example okay I'm going to enter through these. And then I can see here, oh, it did not take. Oh, shoot. I actually set it up incorrectly. I did 
201.202. So I'm going to go back and change that. So 10.21.3.201. Click enter through these. And I can see my IP address is 10.21.3, now 201. Now to make any of these to go into effect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press save, and now I'm going to write that configuration file to my device. You're going to see on the device, it's going to go through a boot up sequence, and it's lost my connection. I've changed the IP address to it, and I'm pressing save. And I press save to it. <clears throat> so what I can do is I can go back into the telnet command. So what I did is I just pressed up on my keyboard and it entered in the last command. But now my IP address is 201.9999. And now I'm back into that device and it's made that programming change. Okay. So what we're going to do, the next one is actually come into two. And here, what we're going to do is the device uh, attached is always going to be a slave. Here's where we can set the protocol, whether it be Modbus RTU or Modbus ASCII. So the T2000 that we're connected to is set up Modbus RTU. And then we can do the interface type, and we have a couple options here. One is an RS-232. Two, the second option is an RS-422 or RS-454 wire. Or what we always do for heat tracing is this third option, which is RS-452 wire, and it's already selected to three. I don't have to enter three. I could hit enter because it's already selected. And then it's going to do the interface parameters. So what these numbers represent is the baud rate, the data bits, whether there's a parity or not, and the amount of stop it. So the T2000 that we actually have is actually set up exactly like this. So I can hit enter, or what you could do is actually sit 9600.8.n.2, and hit enter, uh, Modbus port leave is 502. And it'll write that configuration change. Even though there was no changes, that's how you would enable the changes. Okay, so that's how we set up the serial, um, the serial uh, mode settings. Next one that we want to go through is really just around the message timeout and the serial transmit delay. So we're going to go into the settings four, and here we're going to skip through most of these. We can leave as the default value. <clears throat> character timeout is by default set to zero. So the character timeout is the timeout between characters within a Modbus uh, message. So typically this is left to zero or a very low value, something like 50 milliseconds would be acceptable. The message timeout is your actual timeout of your entire Modbus, um, your entire Modbus message. So if you're running into heat trace communication issues, you know, 2,000 milliseconds or two seconds would be an acceptable rate. But sometimes, for really long um, communication loops or even some heat trace controllers, this has to get bumped up. Sometimes three, even as crazy as five seconds. But I'm going to leave it. Maybe I'll bump this one up to three seconds. And there are serial transmit delays. So this is the delay is when. I, the Modbus communication receives a message, how long is it going to wait before it transmits um, its response? So typically we leave this around 20 milliseconds, but this could go, you know, we could increase this to 50 milliseconds, for example. But again, usually it's going to be your message timeout and your serial transmit delay is what you're going to adjust and typically increase, unfortunately, um, if you're running into any sort of communication issues or you've got intermittent communication on anything on your heat tracing. Okay. And everything else we can just we can just um, enter through. So we can see the changes we've made. So we've sent the character timeout to 50 milliseconds, message timeout to three seconds, and our serial transmit delay to 50 milliseconds. So made these changes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit save. And you can see the device is gonna go through a boot up sequence. I'm gonna lose connection. And usually when that red light goes out, we are good to reconnect and just confirm that all of our settings have taken. Okay, so we can see all of our changes. We've rebooted the device, we've reconnected on Telnet, we can see all of our configuration changes have uh, taken effect. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is actually just prove that we can talk to the devices that we're talking to. So the easiest way to do that is using a tool like Modbus Poll or ModScan to actually, to actually communicate to the heat trace controller and confirm that we have communication. So on our Telnet screen, I'm just gonna hit Q and just um, just um, disconnect um, without saving. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to open up Modbus Pool. So Modbus Pool, again, is a basic Modbus uh, polling tool, and there'll be resources below this video that'll talk about, hey, depending on what heat trace controller you're talking to, there's some, there's some specific Modbus registers that you need to be pointing to. So Modbus Pool looks like this. We're going to establish a connection. We're going to 
for connection, hit connect. And here's where we're gonna set the IP address for the device. So we've changed the IP address for, to 10.21.3.201. So report's set to 502. And this one's set as a connection as Modbus TCP IP. So this represents like connecting to this device via an ethernet connection, okay? Hit okay. The connection's been established. And then what I need to do is come over here to the settings and go to the read write definitions, okay? Now, the Modbus address of our T2000 is set to 11. And then depending on the heat trace controller you're speaking to, you may need to actually um, select a specific function code or a specific address. So there's a resource that'll come in this video if you're talking to uh, an, an MBET 920 or a Thermon TCM2 controller. Uh, essentially, most of the main um, industrial heat trace controllers we've got listed um, in terms of, hey, if you're going to do a Modbus uh, pull request to confirm communication, then what you should set these values to. But for the T2000, I can leave these as is and just set my slave address or my Modbus address to 11. I can hit apply. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see communication. So on our Modbus polling tool, I'm going to see transmits, no errors. And these are the values that I'm getting transmit back. I'm actually not concerned about what these values are. These are, I'm just pulling Modbus registers, but really all I'm doing here is just proving that I can um, I have communication established um, with my heat trace controller through the Lantronics device. Anyway, that's everyone. Hope this, hope this was helpful. Take care.